members of the Rebel Alliance Deceptibot 9 here and today we're diving into my first Black Series ranking video. It seems kind of weird because I'm a pretty big fan of the Black Series of Star Wars as a whole and I have made at least one other Black Series video at this point. And I don't know how I haven't gotten around to making at least one Black Series ranking, but I've got a couple in the chamber now. And we're starting today with a line of figures based on my favorite Star Wars animated property. Boo! You stink! I know, slanderous to some of you Clone Wars fans, but I love Star Wars Rebels. And I didn't initially. I watched the first season a little bit when it started to premiere, and then I dropped out of it because I didn't... I didn't I wasn't a fan of it at that point. And then they hooked me by saying Darth Vader was going to be in season two. And I went, okay, well, now I'm going to have to watch it so I can see what Darth Vader's up to. And then I went back and watched season one. And it wasn't that bad the second time around. And I watched season two. And I got hooked on season two, especially the finale of season two. And then the show continued to get better and better after that. Season three and season four are some of the best pieces of Star Wars media that is out there overall. And I have finally now got all the Black Series figures of the Star Wars Rebels characters. And just for transparency's sake, I am including Ahsoka and Grand Admiral Thrawn into this. So it's not just the core team, but it's also those two. Because uh, I don't know if we'd have figures of these characters without the show bringing them into higher prominence. Uh, particularly this Ahsoka is just based on the Ahsoka design from Star Wars Rebels. And Thrawn came out... Uh, a little bit after his debut in Star Wars Rebels, along with the Hera figure, came in the same wave as him. So I'm counting them in the same Rebels overarching wave of figures. And without further ado, we've got eight figures to rank, so let's get right into that. All right, coming in all the way at the bottom, at number eight, is the main protagonist of the show himself, that being... Ezra Bridger. Now this is the original release Ezra Bridger. This is the one from the Red Line. I got very lucky and found him at a GameStop. Uh, this is a little bit after he was already had been released. So, and he was going upwards of 60, 70, 80 dollars at that point. So this is not the re-release in the Galaxy series. This is the Red Line one. And yeah, I mean, he's not bad. He's not a bad figure by any standard. I really do like him, his like his look and his aesthetic overall. Of course, the lightsaber is awesome. Ezra's lightsaber has always been one of the coolest designs to me. The head sculpt is a little wonky. It's the original release. I, I think the newer release kind of fixed it a little bit, but overall you see what they were going for. He's not that bad. He has all the standard articulation of a Black Series figure. I just think all the other figures are a lot better than him. All right, coming in at number seven is... Hera Syndulla. Now, I actually really like this figure. I like her a lot more than I thought I was going to. This is the Galaxy release version of Hera, not the original Red Line release. I'm not sure if there is much of a difference. I just missed her the first time around, but she looks great. Her face sculpt is really good. Again, this is a little, could be a little bit nicer because it's the Galaxy release version. I like her Twi'lek tendrils. Overall, her aesthetic is just really really nice uh she's got typical black series articulation accessory wise she does have a little tiny pistol that fits in her ankle and it can fit in both hands and overall i mean she's not bad she's just down at the list for the typical reason of all the other figures i just like more over than her i, I wish if anything they included some more accessories to give her i'm not quite sure what they could have but i think a couple more accessories would have fit nicely all right, coming in at number six, I feel like some people might be a little upset by this choice because I know some of you aren't super huge fans of having Astromex at the $20 price point, but it's Chopper. I love this guy. Chopper is probably my favorite Star Wars droid, period. And I think this Black Series figure does a whole lot and adds a whole lot to being just a tiny little guy, right? He's He's got these arms, and these arms have articulation on them. They can bend and they can rotate, but they also fold all the way up so that you can have his standard head right there. His head does rotate. This little arm also can come out as well, plus the legs, you know, they, they rotate just like R2-D2s or whatever. And he's got this little piece, which right now is just a wheel, but it can come out because it's replaced with a couple other accessories, or 
another accessory, which is flame effect. So it's like his jetpack and it's launching him up. And that's really cool. I display him like that quite often. He also does also come with an alternate leg. So I think unlike R2-D2, at least they have beefed this guy up with some accessories that do look really cool and do fit the character in terms of giving Astromax some stuff to do and some stuff to you know, mess around with and have different ways to display. I think Chopper really nails it. And I have a ton of fun with Chopper. I, I think it's a really great guy. All right, coming in at number five is Sabine Wren. And she looks awesome. This is the Galaxy release version of Sabine and not the standard Redline release. But overall, she is super, super cool. They really nailed all the paint details and the paint effects on her armor. I think she looks super, super neat. And she's one of probably my favorite Mandalorian figures that have been released. I am planning on making a Mandalorian ranking video. I don't know if she'll make an appearance there or not yet since she's also on this list, but I guess it's only fair that she makes it over there. Anyway, she's really, really neat. I did not expect to like this figure as much as I did because, you know, you most of you all now will know my, my gripes with Marvel Legends, at least, female figures, and so I... I was kind of worried that Black Series was going to have the same uh, reputation, but Black Series usually nails their female figures, so it's it's not really that bad. And, I mean, yeah, come on, look at her. She does also have removable helmet, and so under there you get that nice-looking Sabine head sculpt with, of course, her painted hair, and she looks fantastic. She looks lovely. I don't quit. I never quit. And coming in at number four is Ahsoka Tano. One of my favorite Star Wars characters to ever exist. I love Ahsoka, and this figure does not disappoint. And I was super excited that they decided to re-release all the Rebels because, you know, like I've been saying so far, I didn't get some of them in their initial releases. Ahsoka was one of those because I was a fool and didn't buy Ahsoka. I bought Old Man Han and FN2187 instead because Force Awakens had just recently came out. And I was like, oh, I need all the, I need the Force Awakens guys. Should have bought Ahsoka, idiot. Talking to you from oh, yes, high school, dang. dummy. Anyway, so I was super glad they re-released Ahsoka because she's great. She is awesome. Look at this head sculpt. It's phenomenal. I love her tendrils as well. Overall, just going down the sculpt is magnificent overall. Of course, she has her lightsabers and they're in the white color scheme as well. This Ahsoka really nails it, really knocks it out of the park. The one gripe that I have is that this wrist, only one of the wrists has the up and down that you can get. And it looks really nice, like on this wrist, to be able to put it all the way back like that. So if she's holding her lightsabers behind her, she can get the nice even pose like she commonly has. This wrist only has the side to side and not the up and down. So that's one thing that I think I would have fixed is that she can get proper... She can get proper behind her back articulation, but even that isn't too bad. Overall, Ahsoka is lovely. I do also have the Clone Wars Ahsoka. I am no Jedi. All right, coming in at number three, the first Star Wars Rebels figure I ever bought because he is my favorite character on the show. That is, of course, Jedi Kanan Jarrus. So this is the original Redline release of Kanan, not the Galaxy release. So his head sculpt was all right for the time. Uh, it could use improvement now. Obviously, it has gotten that improvement. But I just stuck with my old one. I didn't want to rebuy all the ones that I had already. And, I mean, come on. Look at this guy. He looks great. He poses super great, too. I love being able to put him in so many different poses because he looks absolutely incredible in all of them. He, of course, has his ponytail. And I love what they did with the accessories on him. He does come with his pistol that he uses in the show. But also similar to what he does in the show is that his lightsaber can actually come apart. At certain points in the show, he takes off the emitter part and puts it on his belt in a separate section than the, the hilt because he doesn't want to be identified as a Jedi. And they do that in the figure as well, and they have different ports for them to go on the figure. Like on his belt right here, that's where his emitter clips into, and on his back on his belt, that's where the hilt clips into. And that's a really neat touch that I would not expect them to pull off, but they did. And Kanan looks awesome. The thing I wish they would have done with the Galaxy series is that they would have included some character head, alternate character heads that are uh, representative of their later series appearances. Like if they had released 
Kanan and Ezra and they had their season three and four appearances so that we could have a blind Kanan and a short hair Ezra and same thing with it being different colored hair. I think that would have been the way for me to be able to go and get those other Galaxy Collection figures but I've got my original Kanan right here and I still love him to this day. All right, that brings us to number two, one of the big bads of the show himself, and one of the best villains Star Wars has ever had in canon and in Legends. It is, of course, Grand Admiral Thrawn. And you can see I did add his uh, Salam Salamiri, I think that's how you say it, you Salamiri, onto him from the Luke Skywalker comic book set, Heir of the Empire set. Yeah, but I mean, come on, look at this guy. This is not the archive release of him. This is the original release of him, the Redline series one, because I knew he was going to be big, and I also just like Grand Admiral Thrawn, so I needed to make sure to grab that. I mean, look at the blue and the piercing red. He looks so, so nice, and going all the way down, all the Empire detail just is typical Empire stuff, but, I mean, it's Grand Admiral Thrawn. He's got the blue hands, of course. This is one of my favorite poses to put him in. He just sits on my shelf like this in a very in a very authoritative, just calm stance, and I love it. He looks so nice. He does come with a pistol that you can use as well on him, but man, if you don't have a Grand Admiral Thrawn in your Star Wars Black Series collection, especially after they archive released him, you definitely need to because he is an amazing piece and he looks absolutely fantastic with the rest of the Empire. To defeat an enemy, you must know them. Not simply their battle tactics. Which, of course, takes us to number one. He is one of my favorite characters on the show, but he's also a fantastic release overall. It is Garazab Aurelios, also just known as Zeb. Yes, this is a deluxe figure release from the Galaxy Collection when they released all the other Rebels figures. And this guy is absolutely awesome. I love that they were able to make zeb in the black series form and i mean he looks great like look at this armor detail even that face sculpt is just accurate it's so perfect with the hair going on the pointy ears just even the paint apps on his arms to get that texture looks really really nice i love what they did with his his staff weapon because you can shrink it up you can take the electro bits off shrinks up and it twists around and, and the handles can fold out so you can make it like the gun that he uses occasionally on the show they of course also put in ports on the back for him to be able to store it which is super incredible but one of my favorite things about zeb is the way they articulate the feet i absolutely love that there's a double knee joint there but there's also this ankle joint that has swivel at it and the foot joint that has swivels on it and you can move it forward and back as well. And I mean, he's he's a great choice for a deluxe release. I think they did what they needed to do to get some of that articulation and some of those paint apps and the accessories. I really just need more alien figures overall in the Star Wars Black Series because that's one of my favorite things about Star Wars is the different alien creatures. And they have been expanding lately and I love that they have been. And Gareth Zabarellios here is just a perfect example of how to do a deluxe figure and a great, a great example of how to translate an animated character to a realistic figure form. He looks absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Alright everyone, that is all I have today for my Star Wars Black Series Rebels ranking video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down below what you think about Star Wars Rebels, about what you think about these figures in particular, how you would rank them similar to me, which ones do you like, which ones do you not like, all that kind of stuff. Let me know if you want to see more Black Series content. I do have a little, uh, at least one other video planned for Black Series, because like I said, I love Black Series, I love Star Wars, I love talking about all this stuff with you guys. And... Don't forget to go check out my TikTok as well where I post videos about figures that I don't think I can make full videos of over here. That's all I've got for you guys today and I'll see you all next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.